All right, so this is the big one. It's confidence intervals for a population proportion. If you do any university subject, um, you will inevitably do a stats unit and you'll have to deal with confidence intervals. They are really important and they talk about the inherent um, uncertainty when it comes to taking a sample from a population. All right, so this is a pretty real example. Uh, you survey 1,000 Australians and find that 55% plan to vote Labor in the next federal election. All right, and so the obvious question is, well, is 55% of Australia planning to vote Labor as well? In which case, Labor would win the election, presumably. Um, so that's our real question. Will Labor get more votes than the other parties in the next election? Uh, now, the sample would suggest that they would, right? Because it's a pretty good guesstimate to say that if your sample is 55%, um, success that is voting labor then your population is probably close to that as well but we know that when we take samples those samples vary that's the work that we've been doing so far so that sample proportion of 55 percent the population proportion might be 57 percent it might be 59 percent it might be uh 51 percent it might be 49 percent uh, so we need to figure out how confident we are, hence confidence intervals, that the population proportion is close to that 55% or how close it is. What we know is that sample proportions are normally distributed. So if we surveyed this 1,000 Australians, we found that the number was uh, 55%. Um, but it could have been, if we took another sample of another 1,000 people, it might be 53%. It might be 57%. If we took another sample, it might be way over here at like 59% or something like that. Uh, so now we need to figure out not um, the exact proportion of the population, but how confident we are, what, what bounds we can put around it. And usually you use something called a 95% confidence interval. So standard practice is a 95% confidence interval, and it uh, gets misunderstood a lot. So I'm going to use some natural language here, a couple of sentences to talk about what a 95% confidence interval means. A good way to think about confidence intervals is saying this sentence. I am 95% confident that the population proportion is between X and Y, where X and Y are numbers, right? So I did a survey, I found 55% plan to vote Labor. So my calculation might end up telling me that I am 95% confident that the population proportion is between 52% and 58%. Okay, so that might be a sentence that works. Another sentence that works is, I took this survey 100 times. So if I surveyed 1,000 Australians 100 times, different Australians obviously, I would get a result between X and Y 95 times. So X and Y might be 82, uh, sorry, 52 and 58. So that means that 95 times out of 100, I'll get a sample between those percentages. That also means that five times out of 100, I'll get a sample outside of those ranges. And that's when you might get an upset victory because it was outside of the confidence interval. Enough talking, let's do it. So step one, find the Z score for your confidence interval. So what do I mean by that? Well, we put it on a standard normal distribution. So standard normal distribution, mean zero, standard deviation one. And we want to find out uh, what are the Z scores here and here. In other words, we're solving an inverse normal distribution like this. Negative C is less than Z, which is less than C, is equal to 0 0.95, which is our percentage there. Now, calculator, I'm in stat mode. I go to distribution, normal distribution, an inverse normal distribution. I'm doing a central tail with an area of 0.95, uh, a standard deviation of one and a mean of zero because it's a standard normal. I calculate that and I get negative 1.9599, which is good enough, 1.96 and positive 1.96. Means on a standard normal distribution, uh, there is 95% there is of the responses between negative 1.96 standard deviations and positive 1.96 standard deviations. Now, in statistics, we want 95% confidence intervals all the time. So every statistician and every math student knows 
that 1.96 is the magic number for a 95% confidence interval. So magic confidence interval, if you want to be 95% sure that the population proportion is equal to the, or is within the bounds, um, 1.96. If you want to be 99% sure, um, you need to change that number. Three sort of magic confidence interval numbers. If you need a different confidence interval number, you just need to do that inverse normal calculation. But you should memorize these three numbers and keep them in your head because they get used so often. Now, why would you use different confidence intervals? It depends on the state. Uh, if people's lives are at stake, you might want to have a 99% confidence interval. You might want to be really sure that the uh, population proportion is within what you said it was. If it doesn't really matter that much, if it's a survey about like what sort of ice cream flavor do you like, maybe you only want to be 90% confident or maybe you only want to be like 80% confident, in which case that narrows um, the result, but it increases how uncertain you are about whether you're correct or not. The two from here is just calculating the confidence interval using this formula. Um, now, I really want you to understand what that formula says. It says an approximate confidence interval, which is what we've been talking about this whole time, for the population proportion is given by, all right, let's cut it in half, do, do half at a time. Okay, this first half here says, take the um, sample proportion, which we've found is 55% or 0.55, subtract the Z score of the confidence interval you want. In this case, we want 95% confidence interval. So we're doing uh, 1.96 as our Z score. And then square root uh, sample proportion um, one minus the sample proportion over n. Now, that square root PQN, that should look familiar to you, that's a standard deviation. So we're, we're taking the standard deviation, multiplying it by the Z score, and then subtracting it from the sample population. And then on this side, we're doing the same thing. We're just adding the standard deviation times the Z score. So basically what's happening is we're getting 1.96 standard deviations below the mean and 1.96 standard deviations above the mean. So if I just do that now, we get 0.55, because that's the number of people who said they'd vote Labor, or the proportion of people, minus 1.96 times the square root of PQN. So that's 0.55 times 0.45 over N, we surveyed 1,000 people. And that's going to give us, that square root bit's going to give us our standard deviation. All right, and then over here, we do exactly the same thing, like a comma between them, 0.55 plus 1.96 square root, 0.55 times 0.45 over 1,000. So when I do that, I get an answer of 0 0.5191. So we'll just write that in here, 0 0.5191. Uh, now that's the lower bound of my confidence interval. Now I'll do the other one here, which is straightforward because now I can just go into my calculator and just change that minus to a plus, And I get 0 0.5808. Okay, now what does that mean? Going back, because we've answered the question now, we're actually finished. Um, I am 95% confident that the population proportion is between 0.5191 and 0 0.5808. In other words, I am 95% confident uh, that Labor will get more votes because they're going to get somewhere between 51.91% uh, of the votes and 58.08% of the votes. Now, that's me being 95% confident. But what if the stakes are higher than that? What if I was say 99% confident? Well, if I wanted to be 99% confident, I have to stretch that confidence interval by changing my magic number to 2.58, that Z score to 2.58. Now that still gives me a decimal of 0 0.5094, which means that it's still close, uh, but, Labor is still getting more votes, and obviously that stretches the confidence interval in both 
directions. So we go from being 5808 to 5905. Confidence intervals, you can't give a precise answer for your population proportion, but you can say the sentence, I am 95% confident that it's between these two values. And that's what the confidence interval is all about.